Welcome to the Americana Bistro Girl. I'm your host, Roberto Alvarez Galloso, serving you the best in Americana music. We have one of the greatest artists of all time in Americana music. A winner of many awards, has been in the TV and radio a lot, really great person. And his Christmas album, what a Christmas it was, was is one of the greatest. It's a, it's a, it's a gem. Especially I like the, one, the song that says, Every Day is Christmas. Thank you. It's John Arthur Martinez, and I have him on board. Welcome aboard the, the Americana Bistro Girl. Thank you very much, Roberto. Okay, we want to know, how did you get started in, uh, in the world of music? I'm a second generation musician. My father was a drummer. He played with uh, several bands in the Austin, Texas area after he got out of the Marines. Before he got into the Marines, he was uh, playing with a family called the Ramos family. Uh, they were pioneers in the Tejano world mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, putting horns and, and uh, even doing some songs that were uh, that you might call a Texas two-step, but, uh, but, but sung uh, in Spanish and in English. And, uh, and then when he got in the Marines, he came out and he started playing with a band called the Texas Drovers. And they, uh, they had the, uh, the good fortune of being at the right place at the right time. When Freddie Fender became successful, they would hire the Texas Drovers to back up Freddie. So uh, anyways, that's how, how I've, I've come. I'm second generation. I'm, I have a love for drums, uh, just like my father. Uh, but I began writing uh, poetry in elementary school and I took the, uh, that poetry evolved into songs into high school and college so uh, that's it's been a it's evolved that way and uh, I've written gosh 700 plus songs over the years I, I can't possibly ever record all of them uh, properly but uh, but I'm, I'm trying I'm on my 50 I'm working on my 15th album now your 15th album well you've had really had great albums here in addition to what a Christmas it was which I love a lot uh, I've, I heard your, uh, I've heard all of your other albums, San Antonio Woman, If Stars Could Sing, Purgatory Road, Lone Starry Night, I loved each one, one of them. Uh, how, well, I'm going to take an ex I wanna, a big example from Purgatory Road. What was the big inspiration from uh, Purgatory Road? How did, what inspired you to do Purgatory Road? Purgatory Road was one of the songs that was born out of a real life situation. My daughter had her vehicle repossessed and she had uh, purchased one of those, uh, uh, she'd gone through one of those payday loans uh, where you, if you give, give up your, your, uh, your paycheck or your, and, you, and you sign over your automobile, uh, you know, they have a way of, of uh, getting their money back. So uh, rather than let us know that she was in, uh, needed some financial help, she got one of those high interest loans and they took her vehicle. So the song was born out of uh, my efforts to try to get her vehicle back and help her get her vehicle back. And after I had uh, been successful in doing that, I uh, was traveling through the hill country and I passed a place called Devil's Backbone. And I thought, well, I can use that in the song. I passed another uh, road called Purgatory Road between uh, San Marcos and, and San Antonio. And I thought, well, I can use that in the song. And then as I came into San Marcos, I, uh, a, a freight train was coming down the railroad track. Uh, so I had to wait there uh, before I crossed over to, to do some songwriting with my buddy at Cheatham Street Warehouse. I thought, well, I can use that freight train as well. So all of that uh, wove itself into the song. Yeah, but it was really great. I love I loved the Utopia. And Purgatory Road, but one song that really that really got to me was uh, the last song in Purgatory Road. It reminded me of the time of my wife Maria and I. Maria loves your music, and my, and her and my mother, my my ex mother in law. She's now with the Lord. Uh, she loved your music too, especially Cajita de Milagros. Uh, but it was one called When You Whisper in My Ear, which I, which was very really, really, very beautiful. It reminded me of the time when my I was I channeling. I was channeling the Tin Pan Alley songwriters when I was writing. When you whisper in my ear, <laughs> I wanted to write something that that Nat King Cole would might have recorded. Yeah, but you did more than the, the than a song that Nat King Cole recorded. You did a classic, one that celebrates love, especially a true love between a man and a woman. 
and old romance, new romance, the whole bit. I, I listen to it, I think of, I think of myself with uh, Marili and everything. Uh, you've, so you've won a lot of awards, and please feel free to talk about the, the awards that you've won over the years. Well, I think the, the most uh, significant one well, early on uh, was when Flaco Jimenez recorded one of my songs, Seguro Que Hell Yes, and it landed on a Grammy-winning album. And uh, so to, to get that recognition from the National Academy of Recording Art, Arts and Sciences that I was a contributing songwriter to a Grammy-winning album, that, was, that gave me early validation that I was doing the right thing. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Utopia. Uh, that song, which was co-written by, uh, by Bill Cummings and John Greenberg about Bill Cummings' life, uh, that song was the Texas Music Awards uh, Song of the Year, mm -hmm. and uh, that one garnered probably the, uh, as much radio play across Texas as any of my other songs. And, and so those two were pretty significant. But the one that, that led me to, uh, to travels abroad, uh, you know, I go to Europe now, I'm on my, I was due to, uh, in fact, I would have been flying in today from, Par from, uh, from Paris, uh, we were scheduled to do a tour that was canceled because of COVID-19 mm -hmm. concerns. But those tours into Europe were born out of my appearance in second place finish on the USA Network's National Star. Mm -hmm. I saw that too. And uh, so that, that, that was probably one of the most significant ones that led to uh, me reaching fans all over the world. No, you've had, you have fans all over the world. You even have fans in China. I was in China during the Olympics and I told them a, a long time ago. I was, in, uh, I was there in the Olympics, I told them about your music, and they bought some of your CDs. Which reminds me of another CD. There was one that I really, really caught my attention, which I loved a lot. Blakely and Martinez. Hello? Hello? Are you there, John? I'm here. I remember a CD called Blakely and Martinez. How, what inspired you to record a duel with Blakely? And how... how and, uh, well... CD was definitely uh, uh, a natural occurrence because Mike Blakely and I began songwriting uh, together early on in our in both of our careers. We were uh, I'm going to make sure I put this on a power cord because it's been away from the power charger. So uh, so that's what I'm why I'm moving. do uh, But but uh, Mike Blakely and I uh, have probably written. 70 or 80 songs together uh, over the years and so it was natural that we would do a CD uh, together. Uh, Mike, let me tell you a little bit about Mike. I met Mike at a, a program that I was co-hosting called Floyd Tillman's Pickin' in the Park. Floyd Tillman's a legendary uh, award-winning CMA uh, uh, Hall of Fame songwriter who retired in my hometown of Marble Falls, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I asked Floyd if he would help me with some of the charity events that I was doing, and we started a concert series called Floyd Tillman's Picking in the Park. Mike Blakely showed up. Uh, I did not expect him. I did not know him at the time. He introduced himself, and he said that he had just written a feature for Texas Highways magazine about Floyd Tillman and, uh, and wanted to meet me. And so I... I, uh, I had heard about Mike before, even though I had never met him uh, from other friends. So I said, Mike, would, would you feel like doing a song? And, and he, I, I caught him off guard, but he said, sure. And he came up and shared a song. And I thought, this is a very talented writer. I'd love to do some co-writing with him. So every Monday after that, we would get together at his ranch and do songwriting. Because so I love, that's how that album was yeah, born. I, did love, I, did, I loved the album. I loved it. It was very creative, really great. Spontaneous, and don't worry about the plug. We uh, we in the Americana Bistro Girl thrive on spontaneity, especially with the music. And another album that I that ripped two other albums that caught my attention: San Antonio Woman and If Stars Could Sing. Where were the inspirations for those? Well, I'm going to start with the first one: If Stars Could Sing. I was doing a recording for an artist named London Bailey. And uh, in London, uh, she uh, had requested that I include one of my uh, very talented musicians, 
from Brazil that lives in Austin now. Uh, he's a great percussionist, and so I invited Luis to add percussion. And Luis, every, he's very particular about every piece of percussion he has. Everything sounds so beautiful, and the chimes that he had, when he played the chimes on the recording, they sounded so magical. And, she, and so Bailey, I, say, I should say London Bailey, uh, said, wow, that's how it would sound if stars could talk. And so I said, London, I think we're on to, to something here. So we started, the, I said, let's write this song, uh, If Stars Could Sing, together. So she and I co-wrote that song, uh, If Stars Could Sing, along with Rick Bussey and another buddy of ours uh, named uh, uh, David, uh, I just went blank on David's last name. But anyway, uh, uh, that's how that song was born. Great. And, and the album, uh, of course, resulted from that first song. Now you said you've been to Europe and everything. How's the how's the before we had the uh, COVID thing? How has been the American music scene in Europe and in other parts of the world that you've visited? The folks in Europe really appreciate music from Texas, and I, I shouldn't just say Texas because obviously Americana encompasses a lot more than just Texas music. Right. But they want something that is that is organic. They want something that is real, and and they can they can see when when they can tell when something is not real, even if they don't speak the language fluently. Mm -hmm. And so our music plays very well there. Our uh, the uh, our blend of folk and country and Tex-Mex and Western swing, which reminds me, uh, I need to get you my new one for the love of Western swing. Great. Uh, I'll, I'll, and as soon as we Hang up. I'll uh, uh, I'll make sure that you I put that one in the mail for you. you for yeah. I'll give you hello. 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 One minute. One minute. For to promote that new album. I'm gonna give you my address, but I think we're I think we're, I think I'm disconnecting here in Miami. So I just wanted to I wanted to have one last question. When all of this sure. when all of this is resolved. When we have all of this COVID thing all taken care of, put behind us, do you think are you going to be doing uh, concerts in uh, here in the South, especially in Florida? We have here in the Keys, the Key West Singer Songwriter Festival, and in Key Largo, the Original Song Festival. Uh, you know, remind me uh, uh, when that is. Uh, it, it's it's every May. Every May. Yeah. The beginning of May? The Kings, the, the Key West Singer Songwriter Festival is in the first week of May. And then the Key Largo Songwriter Festival or Original Song is in the second uh, week of May. They cancel because of COVID too. Yes. Now, I would love to come and I have, I've done many house concerts in Florida, but I've never actually played that festival. And most of my shows uh, across the United States are, are born of some fans passion for my music and so uh what i'll have to do is book a house concert there to get me there and so i can uh, be there for the festival yeah what i'm gonna uh, there's the other possibility when all of this blows through i wanted to go to texas but one of my biggest passions is to go to texas number Love one to have you. number one i know i know a lot of people in texas you uh, Jessica Shepard, Karen Chisholm, Diane Renee, all the Texas, uh, mu uh, all the Texas musicians. I wanted to meet all of you personally. I almost went to Texas in 2013. I had a high school reunion for my uh, from. I, I, I graduated from the American High School in Venezuela, and they were going to do their high school reunion in Texas, and I tried to go. Unfortunately, I made a promise to to my um, distant cousin who was graduating from law school in in Yukon, University of Connecticut. I promised him if he had straight A's, I would go. Since he showed me the straight A's, I had to keep my promise. So, but I have not ruled out going Texas. Plus, I have a cousin in Texas. She is, she, she works with the Goosehead Insurance. So, I'm still having. If I can't, if you can't come to Florida, I'm going to find a way to go to Texas. Somehow. I do want to thank you, John. I'm going to give you the uh, my address. Plus, I'm going to give you the information for the Key Largo Singer Songwriter Festival Key West so you could talk with them directly. I have no connection. I'm just simply the host of the Americana Bistro Grill. And my, des my desire in this program is to promote 
independent artists, whether they're established or not established, and in these times of crisis, make sure that they are still in the limelight, especially with, the, with all the cancellations going around. Before leaving, I do want to uh, invite and challenge my viewers to donate to the Health Alliance of Austin Musicians because there have been many musicians in Austin who need this help for their medical care. Not everyone has great medical care in the world. There are some that do, but there are some that don't. And the Health Alliance of Austin Musicians, John, please feel to correct me if I'm wrong, they have a really, really, the Health Alliance of Austin Musicians have a really great arrangement for the, for the musicians. You are, you are preaching to the choir. The Health Alliance of Austin Musicians was one of the first people to help me when I had a massive hernia that was uh, close to, uh, to uh, uh, I mean, it was almost tennis ball size. And they took me in and they said, this is an emergency situation. We're going to fast track you. We're going to take care of your hernia for you. And they took care of everything. And they've been uh, a blessing in my life. In addition to that, they have other programs like, uh, for instance, uh, on a regular basis, I see a chiropractor in Austin that is part of the Health Lines of Austin Musicians Network that uh, that for a small copay, I'm, I'm able to see and get regular chiropractic care, which of course is a necessity for, for musicians who, who play as many gigs as, as I do, you have that repetitive motion. So you, so I love the Health Alliance of Austin Musicians. Yes, it's worth getting behind. Yeah, I have already, during this time of crisis, I did give to the Health Alliance of Austin Musicians. But I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna reveal the amount and in name and in the name of who artists or what artists that I gave to. I'm just gonna say that I gave to them, because if you revealed who, you. if you revealed what artists and the amount, I would be violating the, the uh, one of the tenets that Jesus once said: Don't let your right hand know what your left hand is doing. John, for me, it's a pleasure having you here, and I just wish you the best. We hope to we hope to connect either in Florida or in Texas, and just keep piling up more of these CDs and more concerts. We need more music Thank like you. you. We need unity. For everybody in Americana Bistro Grill, remember, peace in, peace out, and peace everywhere, and may God bless. And remember, the Americana Bistro Grill is no longer on AMI radio. It was on AMI radio, but now it's on the AG News show. The best to all of you, now and always.